If you want to take notes on them, you can take notes on them. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning, God, for another opportunity and privilege, Lord, to come together in your house and to worship you. God, I pray this morning you'd open our minds, our hearts, prepare us, God, for your word, prepare us to worship. God, help us to forget about everything else and help us, Lord, to turn our attention upon you. Father, I pray, God, that you'd have your way here this morning. God, we ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, church. I, uh, I'm thankful for God's presence already. Yeah. He was with us as we practiced. He was uh, with Sister Poole as she taught. Wonderful lesson. We can't understand how great God is. And of course, I'm not going to reteach her a lesson, but I like some of the words that David used in 139 of Psalms. Wonderful, fearfully, marvelous, precious, great. And this opening song is Amazing Grace. His grace is amazing to us because we, we don't understand or comprehend. It's just amazing. Let's worship church. Yes, Brother Dan's not on the piano, but don't let that stop you from worshiping. I'm just so thankful that God has blessed Brother Jason and given him talent to play. So let's just worship the Lord this morning, church. He is worthy to be praised. This opening song is Amazing Grace. My chains are gone. Amazing Grace.
David talked about how good God is. This song is called Goodness with God. He's good, church. Running after, it's running after me. 
It isn't here and there. It's all my life He has been good to me. Though I don't deserve it. So many times I've failed, but He is still good to me. I love verse 2. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. How many times has He led us through the fire? He said there will be times it's going to get hot. There's times that the fire is going to flame up and it's going to come around. But He said also, I will make sure you don't get burned. In the darkest night, you are close like no other. In the, in the, in the, when everything is dark, when everything is falling apart, He says, you are close like no other. I know you as a father. I know you as a friend. A friend like I've never had. A friend that doesn't leave me. A friend that doesn't abandon me. A friend that when everything's falling apart, he doesn't just go off and leave. He's there, right there with you. Carrying you at times. Let's sing that again. Just just think about it as you're singing it. Just think about it. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. Whenever I am able, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. When everything's falling apart, I'm going to still sing of the goodness of God. It's easy to sing of the goodness of God when everything's going good. But where the faith is, is when everything's falling apart, I still sing of the goodness of my God. With a raise in your hand, you're saying, Brother, I need God this morning. I need God, in a, and it doesn't matter which way it is. God can take care of it. And while we're raising our hands, we're saying, God, I give it to you. I'm not going to give it to you and then bring it back down. Come on, church. We do that sometimes. God, I don't want you to take it. Then we worry about it. And then we keep putting it out there. And we keep pulling it back. And God says, once you give it to me, let me have it. I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to take care of it. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness. Oh, oh goodness. God, we thank you for waking up in the morning 
We thank you for the roof over our head. We thank you for the clothes on our back. We thank you for the food on our table, God. The goodness, the goodness of you. And God, we thank you for the hands that are raised. We thank you for taking care of those problems, God. Every hand that was raised, everyone that is listening that has a need, God, we are thanking you now for the deliverance. We're thanking you now for the healing. We're thanking you now for the financial, God, miracle. We're thanking you now, God, because we believe that it's going to happen. We rebuke you, Satan, for the lies. And we thank you, God, for the goodness. And we thank you for the miracles that are happening right now. We thank you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
I hope that is your prayer and your desire that you allow God to open your heart. Not just to conversion and salvation, but each and every day of our lives that God would open our hearts that we would see what He desires for us. But most of all, that we see how holy and how pure and how wonderful He is today. Amen. Can we sing that again this morning? our hands. Thank Him this morning for His love and His mercy and for His holiness. He is still a holy God. Can we sing that again? Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Jesus, you are holy. Holy, holy, holy. You're holy, holy.
Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. You may be seated if you can be. He's such a holy, holy God, but He allows us to come into His presence. We don't deserve to be able to come into His presence, but thank God Jesus shed His blood, and through His blood we are made worthy that we can come into the presence of Almighty God. Amen? And let us never take this for granted. If you have your Bibles this morning, I'd like you to turn to Mark chapter 16, and we're going to read verses 9 through 11. Mark chapter 16, verses 9 through 11. If you found that, say amen. If you didn't, say oh me. If you don't have your Bibles, it's on the screen for you. It says, Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, He appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom He had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that they had been with... She went and told them that had been with him, as they mourned and they wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive, and had been seen of her, believed not. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today for your presence. I thank you for your holiness. I thank you, God, because you are who you say you are. God, you are still King of kings, and you are still Lord of lords. And Father, I stand here this morning understanding in myself, God, I'm not able to do this. But God, I believe this morning with your help, God, I can deliver what you want me to deliver here today. Help me to say, God, what you want me to say and not what we, I would want to say. But God, most of all, everything that I say and everything that's done, God, will be done under the unction of the Holy Ghost. Let your anointing, God, destroy every yoke of the enemy this morning. Father, I pray it all in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, I want to take my text out of the last part, verse number 11. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. This morning I want to preach on the thought of sometimes it may be difficult to believe. Sometimes it may be difficult to believe. I believe in being real. I don't want to preach to you some fake, phony gospel, but I believe as your pastor, it's my job to preach to you things that are real. And sometimes it's difficult to believe. Amen? I don't care how spiritual you think you are. There may be times in your life it may be difficult to believe. Now maybe this message could be a warning. Maybe it could be a help. I don't know. But I want to believe to you what God has laid into my heart this morning. Maybe it's for me. Maybe it's for you. Maybe it's for somebody watching today. I don't know. Amen. But I want to bring to you what God has laid into my heart this morning. But we see here in the first part of the chapter that Mary, amen, the mother of Jesus and Mary Magdalene went to the tomb to anoint Jesus and his body. And we know that when they got there that the Bible says that the tomb was empty Amen. And Jesus was not there. Amen. And there was an angel that appeared unto them and they asked where Jesus was and he told them. And we know later that Jesus appeared unto Mary. Amen. And he spoke unto her. And we see here in the last part that we read that Mary returns unto his disciples. Amen. It says them that been with him or that was talking about the disciples of the Lord. The men that walked and talked and, and slept with Christ. Amen. The ones that were there almost every step that he took in his ministry. Amen. As he preached, he taught, and he did what he did. 
These were the men that she was speaking to at this moment. Amen. But we find here at the last part where it says, they believed not. They saw with their own eyes Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. They saw the miracles that Jesus had performed with their very own eyes. Amen. They were there to pick up the twelve baskets of fragments as Jesus fed a multitude. Amen. With five loaves and two fishes. Amen. They were there. Amen. When He walked on the water and He calmed the storm and the sea and the wind deceased at His speaking. Amen. They were there and heard Him teach and preach and they walked with Him. And they heard Him say, Time and time again, I will die, but I will arise. I may go to prepare a place for you, but I will come again and receive you unto myself. Amen. But we find here, even though they had walked with the Lord, even though they had heard Jesus say, I'm going to die, but I will arise. The Bible says they believe not. You think, man, how in the world could they not believe? When she spoke the words that He has risen, I have seen Him, that should have brought joy and excitement to the disciples because what He had promised had come to pass. But the Bible says they believe not. And if you read up, she went and told them that had been with Him as they mourned and they wept. They allowed the mourning and the weeping of His death to stop them from foreseeing the promise fulfilled that He had promised them. Amen? Do you see what I'm saying today? Amen? They heard Jesus say, I'm going to die and I'm going to rise again. They saw Him do it before. They saw the excitement on Mary's face as she ran back and said, He's alive! He has risen! But they believed not. They allowed the weeping in the morning to stop them from seeing Jesus for who He was and what He could do. And sometimes in our lives, if we're not careful, we can allow our situations to stop us from believing what Christ said He could do. How many know Satan wants to stop us from believing? That's his desire, that's his plan. He may not get you to fall into a trap of falling into sin or falling away from God, but if He can stop you from believing the promises of God, how many knows we're not all we can be for God? These disciples heard Jesus say, I'm going to die and then I'm going to rise again. But they allowed their weeping and their mourning to stop them from believing what He said He could do. Amen? There will be times in our lives, amen, that we must be careful that we don't allow the situation and circumstances of our lives to stop us from believing who Christ is. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And He has never changed and He will not change. Just because I'm sorrowful, just because I am weeping, just because life is not going the way that I think it should go, we need to still believe that He is who He said He was. Amen. Be careful not to get consumed with the bad that you can't see Jesus for the good that He is. So many times the situation that's in front of us is so bad and so negative that we can't see beyond it and believe that Christ is still who He says He is. Amen? The very disciples, don't say it's never happened to you. Don't say it won't happen to you. The disciples of Jesus believe not. Amen? You don't know what you're going to do when your life falls apart. 
You don't know what you're going to do. Hey Amen. When you go to work tomorrow and they say, don't come back, you're no longer needed here. We're shutting down or just go home and stay home. Hey Amen. You don't know what you're going to do when you walk into the doctor and they say, you got cancer in your body. You don't know what you're going to do. Hey Amen. When you got bills you need to pay and you ain't got no money coming in. Hey Amen. There may be times in our lives that we may not be able to believe. So don't point your finger at somebody else that's struggling to believe. Amen. There will be times in your life it may be difficult to believe. Amen. Anybody else ever experienced it before? Am I preaching to myself today? Bad things still happen to good people, and I don't understand why, but we must believe that God is still in control of our lives, and God has a purpose and a plan for everything that happens in our lives. Amen? But don't allow the bad things to consume your view of who God is. We must still believe in the bad times that God is still good. Amen. We sing that song, all my life God has been good to me. Amen. All my life I can stand here and say, amen, God has been good to me. I have walked through valleys. I have walked through struggles. Amen. But I have been able to stand here and say, God has been with me. Every step, every trial, every test, every knockdown, He's been there to pick me up. We must believe He is who He says He is, even when we don't feel like believing. Do you know when you don't believe, you limit God? Matthew 13, verse 58 says he did not many mighty works there because he was weak and not able, but because of their unbelief. We say God has no limits and God has no boundaries. But this scripture right here says Jesus did not do mighty miracles that he wanted to do Because of what? Unbelief. God has no limits and God has no boundaries. But God will not override our will. God will not force His plan and purpose and His power upon us. If we want to entertain unbelief, Amen, He'll allow you to entertain unbelief. It doesn't change the fact that He is still God and He is still all-powerful, but God will not put His will over your will. God desires to do great and mighty things in our lives, but sometimes we allow doubt and unbelief to stop God from doing what God desires to do in our lives. It's up to you and it's up to me. When doubt and unbelief comes in, it's up to us to get rid of it. We can't let it take root and let it take hold. Amen? God, just don't come along and start removing doubt and unbelief. we got to pray and we got to ask God. Help me to have more faith. God, help me to believe. Satan knows if he can get us not to believe, it can hinder God from doing what God desires to do in our lives. We sing this song, God, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. We need to ask God, open my eyes. If there's things in my heart that are causing me to doubt you, if there are things in my life stopping you from doing what you desire to do in my life, help me, God, to get rid of them. Somebody knows we don't need them anyway. But those things stop us from believing and being all that God desires for us to be. How many knows this morning, it's okay to ask God to help you in your times of unbelief. Mark chapter 9, verse 24, it says, And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. 
Amen. Let this sermon be a warning. Let this sermon be ringing in your ears. When you find yourself in a place where you're having a hard time to believe, remember you can cry out to God and just be real to God. God already knows you don't believe. Amen. But we try to put on a fake face when we walk into the house of God, acting all spiritual, but we know in our hearts we got doubt and unbelief in there. It's okay to say, God, I'm having a hard time. I'm struggling to believe. Lord, help my unbelief. Lord, help me to be able to believe. Maybe you've prayed and you prayed and it seemed like God is not answering. And then you're having a hard time believing. It's okay to say, God, I don't understand. Amen? Being real. I prayed prayers. God, I don't understand why things are going the way they're going. But you know what? It's not for me to understand. It's for me to believe that God is still in control. Even though I don't understand and see the end result, I have to have faith and I have to believe. I put my life into His hands and I have to have, amen, faith that I have acknowledged Him in all my ways and I have to trust and believe that He's going to direct my path. And if I have to pray, God, I'm walking down this path and I don't understand the path that you have picked out for me. Anybody ever been there? God, I didn't want to travel this path. Why did you bring me down this path? Lord, I don't understand. I don't believe. Lord, help my unbelief. It's okay. It's okay to pray that prayer. This father's child was dying. It died. Amen. And he was weeping and crying. Amen. He was being real with Jesus. I believe. But help my unbelief. There will be times in our Christian lives that we still believe that He is Christ. And He is still Savior of our lives. But we have a difficult time believing that He's going to do what He said He would do. Does that mean we're a sinner and we're a failure? No. We're just human. But we can't continue to allow that to dictate our lives. We must come to a place and say, I'm tired of this. I need your help, God. So many times we go on farther than we need to. We just need to stop and say, Lord, I believe, Lord, but help my unbelief. How many knows we had to believe in something we've not seen to be able to get saved? Romans 10, verse 9, If thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I know sometimes it's hard for us to believe and have faith in things that we cannot see what we're praying for, and we can't see the results. Amen? Is it hard sometimes? You don't see the answer, but you've got to have faith. I didn't see Jesus die and rise again, but by faith I believe He did what He said He would do. And how many knows that salvation, we have to have faith in something that we did not see, right? We have to believe in our hearts that Jesus did what He said He did, right? None of y'all been there. But we got to have faith in something we did not see happen to be saved. So why not can't we have faith in things that we cannot see happening in our lives? But I prayed and it's not happening. We've got to have faith. I know our faith can get weak. Amen? But we must continue to believe. Amen? We must continue to believe that He is who He said He was. Amen? We may not have witnessed the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, but we had to believe in that to be saved. And there are things that we're praying about. We may not see the answer and how it's going to come, but we have to have faith in that and believe that Jesus is going to bring it forth in our lives. Amen? We all experience times that we don't believe, right? It's not just me. Not just you, it's all of us. We all have times that we don't believe. We will experience times of unbelief. But we can't allow unbelief to rule and dictate our lives. Amen? We have to get rid of it when it comes. 
Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, But without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. Maybe you're going through a trial right now, and you can't see a way out. Or maybe your faith has ran out. Maybe you're at the bottom of your faith barrel right now and you're about to throw in the towel. Or maybe you're faced with a situation in the natural eye. It may look impossible. Amen. But when our faith must gets weak, we must remember the Word of God says that if we will continue to seek Him, that He will reward us. Amen. Just like we had to have faith in salvation to come to Him and give our hearts to Him and receive salvation. Amen. We must also come to Him by faith when we have problems, we have situations in our lives, and we cannot see the answer. We must come to Him with faith, and we must continue to seek Him even though we don't feel like it. Because we must know what the last part of this Scripture says, and that He is a rewarder of those that give up. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Even when our faith runs out, we must continue to have, amen, we must continue to seek God and continue to pursue God. So many times when life hits us at a hard place, amen, we back up away from God. These are the times we need to continue to seek God. Just like He came to us with salvation and He cleansed us and He forgave us. Amen. When we have problems in our lives, if we will continue to seek Him and believe Him for who He is, He will walk with us through the difficulties of life. Amen. We said it. We sing about it. We preach it. Amen. He said when we go through the fire, amen, we will go through the fire. We will not be burned. Amen. He will go with you. He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. The reward is that He goes with you. It's not a reward as if you seek God, all your problems go away. That's not the reward. That's the reward we're looking for. God, where's the end? I'm tired of this mess. I'm tired of this struggle. Amen. But the reward is that God has walked with you every step of the process, even when nobody else knew what you were going through, when you were crying till you couldn't cry no more. Amen. You can get up later and say, God was there and dried every tear from my eye. That is the reward of seeking after God when you're having a hard time of believing. Amen. There will be times it may be difficult to believe, but we must continue to some way, somehow, consume, I mean, seek God. But I'm thankful today God does not need us to believe to be God. God don't need you to believe in Him to be God. Because there are times we may not believe, but you know what? That doesn't change. He's still God. Isaiah 44, verse 6, it says, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, O, oh, and, and His Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and the last. Amen. And beside me there is no God. Isaiah 44, 24, Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, He that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, and spreadeth abroad the earth all by myself. God don't need our help, amen, to be God. But I am thankful today in the difficulties and trials of my life when my faith comes weak and I've come to a place and I'm having a difficulty in believing that He can do who what He said He could do. Amen. Doesn't change the fact that He is still God and He doesn't need me to depend, amen, on Him or believe in Him for Him to be God. He's God all by Himself. He didn't need man's approval to create this earth. He didn't need my faith, amen, for Him to do what He's done on this planet. Amen. He's God all by Himself, and thank God He is still God even when we don't believe He's God. They're out there trying to disprove Him, trying to do away with Him. But how many knows He's still going to be God? 
devil's in your ear saying if God really loves you, if God really cares about you, amen, why believe in a God that brought you to this path in your life? Why believe in a God that doesn't care about you or love you? Why do you believe in a God blah, 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 blah? That's the devil. But guess what? God's still God. And God is still good. Even though I may not believe, I believe, but Lord, help my unbelief. Yes, there will be times you may not believe and you may not have any faith, but we must remember, amen, God will still be God. Amen? He never stops being God. His power is not determined and limited by us. I found a quote and I thought it was very good and I wanted to read it. It said, when we find ourselves most disappointed with God. God has not failed us, but our expectations of God have failed us. Think about it. When we find ourselves most disappointed with God, God has not failed us. It's that our expectations of God has failed us. See, a lot of times it's easy for us to go on feelings. When God's doing what God, we want God to do and God's moving in our life and we're, everything's going great, we're eager to praise and worship God. But when our expectations of God begin to, they don't seem to, oh man, I've been praying and God ain't answering. So our expectations of God begin to decrease. And we think God isn't really that good anymore. But how many knows God's good whether you think He's good or not? But we need to remember, we shouldn't allow our circumstances in our lives to determine our praise unto God. God is still worthy of our praise whether we're having a good day or whether we're having a bad day. God saw us in the pit of our sin and He didn't walk the other direction, but He stopped and He reached down into that pit and He pulled us out. If that's all God's done for you, then you've got a reason to give God praise. Because He don't have to do anything else for you. But thank God He does. He said, I'll never leave you nor I forsake you, but I'll be with you always, even until the very end. So as you walk through the fires, you walk through the storms of life, He'll be with you. Amen? As they return to the music in closing today, there will be times that we may not believe. Just being real today. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9. He said unto the, me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. In our times of unbelief, in our times of doubt, in our times of weakness, God's saying, these are the times that I'm carrying you. Or these are the times that I can show you that I am the strong one. I am the one that's going to see you through. You may have trouble believing and having faith, but God said, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my affirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Yes, we may struggle and yes, we may face difficulties. But through the struggles and through the difficulties, Christ remains with us. Amen. That we can glory in our infirmities or in our times of weakness. We can stand to our feet and say, God was good as we stand this morning today. I don't know what you're going through today. I don't know what you've been praying for and having a hard time to believe in. I don't know what your expectations of God is. But I know this morning there are times that we may struggle. But I also know through the struggle, God will be good and God will be there with you. 
Maybe you're having a hard time believing that God's going to do what He said He would do because of what's going on right now, what's happening in your life. It's blocking like the disciples couldn't see the promise being fulfilled right in front of their eyes. Sometimes we allow the situations of life to block the goodness of God and the things that God desires to do in our lives. As we bow our heads and close our eyes, today, if you're here and you're struggling to believe the altars are open, just come and say, Lord, I believe. Lord, help my unbelief. Don't be embarrassed. Don't think somebody's going to look down upon you. Don't think somebody's going to think anything about you. Don't you worry about that. If you're having a hard time believing this morning, somebody, you need to respond. God wants to encourage you this morning. Hey, man, if you'll make a step of faith and come and say, Lord, I believe. But Lord, help my unbelief. If you don't want to come to the front, right where you're at, let's all find us a place of prayer. As they sing this song this morning, God has been so good to us. Hallelujah. Thank you. Like no other, I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life, you have been faithful.
place and opposition comes, let us walk out our faith and continue to believe that he is who he said he was. He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here this morning. Amen. Brother Adam, will you dismiss us in prayer today?